So, a warm welcome to all of you to another lecture on this course on simulation of communication systems using MATLAB. So, till now we have talked about random processes and we have looked at their properties, namely stationarity and ergodicity. There are obviously other properties of random processes as well, but uh, again since uh, this is mainly a course on simulation of communication systems and not on random processes, we will uh, keep that discussion on stationarity and ergodicity to that point and today we will look at uh, other aspects of random processes. So, in a sense, random processes are signals. So, that is there all random processes are signals. So, when we talk about signals, we obviously want to talk about uh, passing signals through systems and the response of linear time invariant systems to signals. That is what uh, all our signals and systems courses are about. We spend about one semester doing that. So, naturally, if we think of uh, random processes as signals, so random processes are also signals. So, we have seen that uh, in the two definitions of random process, a random process can be seen as a signal that takes a different value whose value is a random variable at each point of time that is one definition and a signal that corresponds to one outcome of the underlying random experiment that is the other interpretation. But nonetheless, a random process can be seen as a signal. Now, since a random process can be seen as a signal we would be interested in how this signal interacts with systems and we would be interested in the spectral response or the spectrum of this signal. So, for any discrete time signal, equation 1 okay. signal xf as in equation 1 represents its dtft discrete time Fourier transform or is a handle on the contribution of different spectral components the is a handle on the contribution of different spectral components to the overall signal, fine. So, that said, we will now talk about uh, the spectra of uh, random signals or random processes. So, when we talk about the spectra of random signals or random processes, we note that this expression cannot be computed directly because because xns are random this expression cannot be computed directly because xns are random so can we do something about it the answer is yes obviously we can uh, talk about the spectrum of a random signal so all of this is under the assumption that xn also write this here xn is a sample function of a wide sense stationary xn is the sample function of a wide sense stationary random process so all of this is under the assumption that xn is a sample function of wide sense stationary random process so this and we have established that since xn are random 
we cannot uh, say that uh, we can take directly take the Fourier transform of this. So, what can we do? The answer is that uh, let us try to figure out the power spectral density of a random process and uh, in the process we will see something interesting. So, xf we have defined as summation n goes from minus infinity to infinity xn 2 pi fn this. So, xf mod square equals summation n goes from minus infinity to infinity xn minus j 2 pi fn times m goes from minus infinity to infinity xm minus j 2 pi fm whole conjugate equals summation this. So, this is the conventional definition of uh, the power spectral density minus f n minus m. So, 1 let n minus m equal tau and 2 take expectation both sides to take expectation of both sides fine. So, if we do this we see that the expected value of square is n goes from minus infinity to infinity n goes from minus infinity to infinity m j 2 pi f n minus m. So, substituting n equals tau I get or actually let us do this first and taking expectation of both sides we get this. So, this is the autocorrelation function. Now, letting tau we get so, we get a primitive expansion of this. So, we get expected value of x And so, this becomes expected value of x f square becomes limit n tends to infinity n times tau by n. becomes this beast and so if I divide by n on both sides there is a summation here n tends to infinity limit n tends to infinity summation tau goes from minus L minus n to n tau over n by f tau this piece. So, and this we define as the power spectral density of 
the random process x so this and uh, here it should be tau so this is uh, taken from hakin's textbook on adaptive filter theory so this basically forms a fourier transform pair with the autocorrelation function and it is physically interpreted as the average of the contribution to the total power from the components of a white sense stationary stochastic process within frequencies between f so i'll just correct this to i'll change this to our notation f plus df the average is taken over all the possible so this is an ensemble average so power spectral density i can say is the ensemble average of the contribution to the total power from the spectral components lying between the range f and f plus df df being infinitesimally small and naturally the total power the total power of the signal is given as the autocorrelation at lag 0 or this so uh, you must have done this in your signals and systems course that uh, the fourier transform or the autocorrelation function function and the power spectral density form a Fourier transform pair. The auto correlation function and the power spectral density form a Fourier transform pair and this is it. Fine. So, this is how we interpret the power spectral density. Here are so practically we calculate we drop this here and we calculate this and uh, so this is for lag l so since i have defined it for lag tau let me make it for lag tau now since uh, the autocorrelation function is defined for discrete lags sxxf is so we know this but let me repeat this since the or let me write this in plain english correlation function is defined for lags the corresponding PST is periodic see with the base period between minus half and half and this is real valued and non negative so is a valued and the psd since it represents the instantaneous or the power of a particular spectral component is also non negative. Also, since we define the power spectral density as this limiting case, we see that this is by definition the expected value of a non negative quantity so the power spectral density is a non negative quantity so 
this result we relegate to later when we talk about the properties of uh, signals passing or random processes passing through systems. So, this we relegate to that point, but we talk about another important property of uh, random processes that is described in terms of power spectra as whiteness. So, we will talk about whiteness. So, you must have heard the term white noise. So, this whiteness is related to that. So, a random process x n or x n is called white when it is power spectral density is a constant function of frequency or remains unaffected by see or the power spectral intensity is flat across all frequencies that is say n naught minus half half. So, S x x f is flat or the power spectral density is flat. So, what does this mean? This means that the autocorrelation function r x x tau takes the form is such that summation for all f or the effect of f tau is eliminated or r x x tau equal to 0 for all tau not equal to 0 only then can the effect of frequency be altogether eliminated when all the terms that depend on frequency are 0. So, all the terms that depend on frequency will be 0 when for all tau not equal to 0 this exponential or this summation vanishes only then can those terms be not 0 or only then can we eliminate the total effect of frequency. So, in order to eliminate the total effect of frequency we have to have that all the, the autocorrelation function at all non-zero lags is 0 or equals or the autocorrelation function function is non-zero only at lag 0 or the autocorrelation function is non-zero only at lag 0. So, whiteness implies that uh, the autocorrelation function is non-zero only at lag 0. So, I will add in the slide and uh, look at the implications in greater detail. So, this means that tau and not tau equals 0, 0 that is this equals n not times the Kronecker delta this. So, uh, whiteness means that uh, the autocorrelation function in term is like the Kronecker delta, but R x x 0 equals expected value of x n x 
I will stop. But for whites and stationary, so as we said, all the processes that we will talk about now are whites and stationary. But for whites and stationary, x n, which means that one x n and x n minus tau are orthogonal. X n and x n minus tau are orthogonal. That is the first uh, conclusion that you can draw, but If x n is a zero mean, if going with our convention, x n is a zero mean process, then this implies that or this piece x n is uncorrelated with all its time shifted versions or put simply x n is uncorrelated with all its time shifted versions. So, this is uh, what whiteness implies that x n is uncorrelated with all its time shifted versions or the power spectral density is flat fine. So, we are now in a position to identify one of the most important uh, ideas in communication systems or one of the most commonly present noise in communication systems that is the additive white Gaussian noise, additive white Gaussian noise. So, a noise, an unwanted signal that adds to the transmitted signal. So, it is additive because it adds to the transmitted signal. It is white or maybe what I can do is I can use different colors to emphasize different points. Greening for white. White noise that has a flat power spectral density or is uncorrelated with its time shifted versions purple Gaussian the noise forms a Gaussian random process or all the noise samples are drawn from a Gaussian all the noise samples are drawn from a Gaussian distribution 3. Also, since the noise is Gaussian, since the noise is Gaussian and for Gaussian random variables uncorrelatedness implies independence individual samples are 
independent since for Gaussian processes uncorrelatedness implies independence the individual samples are independent as well. So, whiteness in case of Gaussian noise implies independence. So, this is about additive white Gaussian noise. We will now use MATLAB to simulate additive white Gaussian noise and look at its power spectral density and look at its uh, autocorrelation. So, right now what we will do is we will manually generate or we will use random to generate white Gaussian noise and uh, use the basic definitions of autocorrelation and uh, power spectral density to uh, calculate uh, these terms. Obviously, later we will use the inbuilt MATLAB functions. So, the aim here is to generate n realizations for len t Gaussian random process step 1 to find its function to obtain its power spectral density to obtain its power spectral density. So, three things. So, let us first say n equals 10,000 t equals 100 standard numbers. So, for C 1 equals 1 to n and x equals random t. So, I have generated a Gaussian random process and so now let us try to calculate its uh, autocorrelation function. So, let us say that uh, I will pick a random location and correlate it with. So, in order to calculate its correlation function what I will do is, so we will use ergodicity we will use ergodicity, we will assume everything is ergodic. So, we will use ergodicity and x t naught. So, what we will do is, so I'll, let me explain first using MATLAB. So, each of these realization n realizations is uh, one sample from the ensemble. Each n or each C 1 is one sample from the ensemble. So, what we will do is pick a sample from the pick a sample from the ensemble full stop or pick a sample function from the ensemble and actually this is worse. Take a point, calculate T naught in for all sample function for all points of that sample function, repeat for all sample functions in the ensemble to obtain the correlation fine. So, this is slightly less instructive. So, let me do this. So, x is gamma 1 this. So, and let me define r equals so say 
x prod equals I randomly pick x 20 times conjugate of x. So, this will basically produce the product of x 20 times the conjugate of x for all samples of x. So, this I define as x prod and r I say equals 1 over n times x prod plus r. So, basically this the this initializes the autocorrelation function step 1. Step 2 generate function create function for that create the product function for that sample function add to average and uh, repeat this n times and you get uh, this. So, let me run this and run. So, I will also do that usual clear all and close all. plot. So, note that all of these are real. We can extend this for complex as well all in right time. Plot r So, the x axis will be tau. So, let me say tau equals 1 is to 20 minus t. These are so one not one is to twenty one is to t minus twenty. Yes, so because twenty is that position, tau and r. X lag. So, this is the autocorrelation function. You see that uh, there is a sharp peak at uh, lag 0 and otherwise it is close to 0. We can also do this in log log or semi log y. And this, so there is a peak at lag 0 or plot the absolute value as well because in order to avoid that negative data, sorry now this is wrong, this is right and absolute value of r, this, so this is 10 to power 0 at lag 0 and otherwise it is below 10 to power 2. So, let me increase the number of samples, so let me do it for 100,000 samples. And then what we will see is in the log scale, this goes to around 10 to minus 3. So, this is what happens when you increase the number of samples or increase the averaging. So, now let us use our definition of power spectral density and try to find out the power spectral density. So, figure nu and s equals FFT r that is uh, the power spectral density is defined as the Fourier transform of the autocorrelation function and plot s x label f
f and y label is power spectral density and I will run this. So, I will get two outputs. Oh, so this is uh, there is a problem. I will I know the problem. I will just uh, resolve it by not real because power spectral density by definition is oh, so this is a sinusoid. this and so this is close to 1 as expected fine. So, we will look at uh, other definitions of power spectral density and uh, other ways of generating these plots in the forthcoming lectures. Thank you.